All right. So today, this webinar, we're going to be talking about social media and um, basically how you can have a good social media plan and strategy uh, for your fencing and decking company and um, all the steps that are involved with it. All right. So what we're going to cover, uh, we're going to cover how to create the video content for social media and uh, come up with a weekly planning process for the posting to make sure you're doing it consistently. Um, we're going to go through the perfect video framework. So not only creating and finding good content, but having a good framework. So it's easy to create that content um, and then how to syndicate it, uh, that content for maximum reach uh, through different social media channels and then repurposing it uh, for increasing the frequency of your posts. So um, taking one piece of content and using it in uh, uh, multiple social media platforms, but also at different times. All right, so I would love to have your undivided attention. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, turn off your social media, um, you know, not scrolling through social media during this, uh, your cell phone. And uh, really, if you're a fencing or decking business owner, um, what we're going to be going through here, we put a lot of time into these uh, slides. It's going to for sure help you in the new year in 2023. Um, it can absolutely change your life uh, and your the life of your business. All right, so who am I and why should you listen to me? Uh, my name is Alex Danner and um, I'm the founder and CEO of Fence and Deck Marketers. And I've been doing digital marketing for over 10 years now. Um, it's what I love to do and it's what I'm passionate about. And I decided to work with fencing and decking companies exclusively um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one was seeing really good results with um, clients in that industry. And I wanted to hone all our strategies specific to one company or one, uh, one niche. And also I have um, worked with fencing crews and done a lot of fencing work, um, mainly at my farm up in uh, Pennsylvania. Had to put up 250 acres or a uh, high fence. 10 foot high deer fence around 250 acres. So I have a lot of respect for all the people that do this type of work. I know it's very, very challenging. Um, so that's why I decided to kind of point my uh, efforts and only towards these types of companies. So fence and deck marketers, um, as the name says, you know, we only work with fencing and decking owners. Um, if you have if you have um, a business that does, you know, fencing and decking as just part of it, and you do other services, you know, that is included as well. Um, just has to be a company that does work with fencing, uh, has does some type of fencing or decking work. But this is all we do. This is what our team does. This is what we're only focused on um, is working with fencing and decking businesses. Oops, skip through. All right, so our omnipresent marketing system is a system that we put in place to get a lot of leads and exposure for businesses so they can grow. Um, and there's three principles to it. The uh, first one is maximize your opportunities. So without a lot of people coming to your website, your social media pages, you're not going to convert leads. Um, however, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You know, you really need to be diverse in your marketing strategies. Um, as I'm sure you've heard before, same goes with digital marketing too. Uh, you know, you want to have a nice strategy put in place, not just individual tactics, where an S, you know, SEO plan or pay-per-click, Google ads, uh, Facebook ads, those might be a tactic, but you want to have a strategy in place uh, depending on your needs and what your, you know, how big your business is and where you want to grow to uh, have an overall strategy. Um, social media, of course, is one as well. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. And um, the second step is you got to have a lot of brand impressions. So that old advertising rule, uh, rule seven, you know, someone needs to see your brand seven times before they actually buy. Um, now with everybody bombarded in social media with all kinds of content constantly, they say it's now more like 21, which seems to make sense to me because, you know, if you're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, wherever, you know, there's just so many things being thrown at you, it's impossible to remember. Um, so you got to make sure that a lot of you're being seen on different platforms, social media, you know, SEO, Wherever somebody's going to go to look for a fence or a deck uh, or a company to do that for them, you know, you want to make sure you're covered there. Uh, so it's great that you have people coming to you and it's great that they understand who you are and trust you. Um, but once you're in that final step and they're actually coming to you when they need that service, 
you need to maximize your website for conversions. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this, uh, but basically the content on your website, your social media pages should reflect the type of job you do and your values. Um, so they feel they can kind of, um, they for sure know that you're the best company in that area for um, the job that they need. All right, so the social dilemma. This is kind of based off of the Netflix documentary. Um, you know, with social media algorithms, they, they're they built to suck you in. I'm sure, you know, you've been sucked in a few times before yourself. I know I have. So it's a, it's a challenge, it's a dilemma because you know, we know that this is happening. It sucks people in, but at the same time, you know, we're business owners, uh, work for businesses, and we want to grow them. And social media is one great way to get more exposure. Um, so kind of weighing uh, those different things. But if you wouldn't mind, put a one in the chat if you should be posting on social media or you know you should be, but currently you're not doing that for your fencing or decking business. Um, put a two in the chat if you are doing social media but you just don't think you're doing a great job about it or job with it. It's got a couple ones. All right. So on to the next one. What there's a lot of things that we see or problems that we see with social media and contractors. Um, I just want to kind of outline a few of them. Uh, inconsistency is a huge one. You know, you see all kinds of contractors out there. Um, they just don't feel they have the time or they post every once in a while, maybe once a month or maybe less, just when the mood strikes. And then from then on, it just kind of falls off. Um, but at the same time, I bet you there's a very good chance you have a competitor that's just always on your feed. So you pull up your Facebook um, and you just constantly see them. You see their jobs. Uh, maybe you look up to their business and what they're doing with social media, whatever the reason, um, maybe even Facebook ads, but they're always posting. They always look like they're just doing it perfectly. Uh, they're posting cool stuff about their team and uh, maybe their past jobs and just doing good work. Um, but at the same time, you're saying, you know, I do all the same stuff, but I just don't have the time. Um, it just looks cool, but I, you know, I just am busy with my business, so I can't do it. Um, also creativity. This is a huge one. Um, I know I've been stuck in this, you know, just thinking that other people are just very creative. You know, you hear people talk about friends or family saying they're so creative. Um, and you just think you might not have that. Uh, but in reality, creativity is just kind of having a plan. I mean, more than likely you're more creative than you think. And whoever you're looking up to is not that creative more than likely. And uh, they have some kind of system that's being built out to uh, handle this. But, you know, when you sit down to try and come up with posts, uh, if you've ever done that, you know, you get stuck in procrastinating. You know, you're just sitting down there. You're not really sure what to post. Or maybe you just want that perfect video or post and you just take forever on it. Somebody calls. You never come back to it. Um, I think most of us have been there. And, uh, you know, same time, you're just looking, what are these people doing? How are they getting this done so well? Um, and we're going to show you ways to do it just like them and even better. Uh, another another cost, another problem is it doesn't pull. So, you know, you post something out there and you, whatever level of effort you gave it, <laughs> but you put it out there, you're waiting for posts, uh, sorry, for likes or comments, and all you hear is crickets. Um, and then from there, you think nobody's watching, nobody cares. What is the point of even doing this? Um, you're like, I took all this time to create this and basically no one saw it. Nothing's coming from it. Um, nothing's ever going to come from it. So I might as well stop. And the inevitable conclusion um, is just failure. You know, you think you failed, whether you did or you didn't. As long as you, if you gave up on it, then of course you have no option but to fail. But you're not getting what you want from social media, you're not building any authority, you're not building positioning, any kind of organic uh, momentum, and that's kind of the end result. But how do we want it to actually look like? So we know the problems, but now we want to go towards what it should be like and how it should be structured. So it's continually being posted to your accounts um, and it's actual solid content. So you want to have content that flows very, very well meaning it's um, very easy to produce, easy to understand, and 
your target audience understands it um, and relates to it. So it's got to be easy to produce and it's got to be easy uh, to come up with topics. Um, it's got to be prolific. So you've got to be posting often. Um, you can't just post, like I was saying, um, once a month. You know, you got to be continuously doing that. Uh, so that way, you're, it's not only going to help customers remember you. You know, if you're consi consistently posting, they're going to keep remembering you. So when that time comes, um, they know to contact you or a referral. Um, but it also helps with the Facebook algorithm. The more you post, the better, uh, the happier they are. So when you have that combination of good content along with um, frequent content, that's really going to uh, satisfy Facebook and get you to the top uh, in front of the most eyeballs. So what does success look like? So of course, we want to get more leads. We want social media to work for us, uh, people to see these posts so they eventually contact us. Um, you know, there's that old analogy um, of a drill. You know, people don't buy a drill because they like a drill or they want one. Um, most people will buy a drill because they want a hole or to fix something, whatever. I'm sure there's some contractors out there that might just love buying drills or collecting them. All the power to you, but you know, the vast majority of people do it because they want to uh, accomplish something. And that's all social media is. Um, I think some people don't really see the benefits of it um, directly, so they don't do it. Um, and then they don't feel like doing it, so it's kind of like a double whammy. <laughs> so it's important to understand that social media does lead to good results and it's very important for a business these days. And it's only gonna keep getting more and more important. So you wanna have a nice plan in place so you get the end result and can consistently do it without too much hassle, which we'll talk about um, coming up. So. What would be the reasons you would want to do this? Um, obviously, you want more business, like I was saying, but um, having an authority in your space. So if you're seeing a competitor that's consistently posting all the time, chances are, especially if they have a good following, that other customers are seeing them too, and they're at top of mind when they need a new fence or a deck. So you want to be that person, of course, be the go-to contractor in your area, um, and at the same time, build trust. So you have good posts that are answering people's questions. They're going to feel like you get them. You understand them, which is going to lead to them buying from you. Um, and the great thing about social media posting is it's free, right? So you don't have to pay for a Facebook post. Um, I mean, page. Well, not a post either. Um, you just have to create it, you know, and grow it, continually do it. And then from there, those leads are free. There's not really a lead cost aside from the time it takes to build it. Uh, but we'll show you how you can keep that down too. Um, but in the end, you know, it's free content to put out there and a lot of potential people to see it because everybody is on Facebook or Instagram for the most part. Okay, so here are five key principles to creating content. Um, we want to come up with topics in advance before we start just going out there and just shooting video or shooting content. Um, what I would like to know is, and you could put a one in the chat, if you feel like if you had a list of topics, something that you could go off of and basically generate um, content consistently, if you had that list readily available, would it be very helpful and would you be more likely to uh, actually post you know, each week? Put a one in the chat. All right, I think it'd be helpful too. I know for from experience that it's very helpful to have that plan in place because once you do, you know it's it's just one less thing to think of. You you know you're already blocking off time to to post. You want to make sure you have a list of content to uh, put in place, um, and it's not that hard to think to think of different topics. It might seem like it, but if you really just thought about all the questions you're asked day to day, um, or whenever you're dealing with customers, you know, people that are calling in, or maybe you're sitting at the kitchen table with them, you know, going over an estimate, uh, when you're actually installing a fence or a deck, or when the build is complete, um, they're always asking something. I'm sure you could think of a million of them. Um, you know, maybe it's how long will it take to build the fence or the deck, different types of fencing that you do, you know, different types of materials that you use for fencing or decks. Um, and then recommendations, you know, people might not know what's best for their property, whether they want a vinyl or 
chain link, whatever type of fence they want, you know, having some idea based on the area they live in uh, would be helpful. So second um, principle is to shoot it in batches. So this is kind of the big key here is it's not like, I think some people think of social media and they look at somebody posting consistently and they're like, wow, this guy is just taking time out of every day to post all these things um, and remembering to do it, has time to do it. Uh, more than likely, they're shooting in batches. So you could take a specific amount of time, you know, once you have it dialed in like an hour and a half, uh, once a week, um, you could do more than that and make content for more than one week, you know, whatever's best for you. But you take that time and you just shoot a ton of content. You have your list of um, content that you want to create and then shoot it all at once. Um, and we'll get into more how to how to come up with these. But when you shoot in batches, it's just one time a week, one time every two weeks to create all this content. And you don't have to think about it the rest of the week. So this one's a pretty big one. Um, you want to have a framework and we're going to go into detail on the framework, but you want to freestyle basically within that framework, meaning you have a system in place, but then once you have the pieces of that system put together, then you just talk about each piece. Again, we'll talk about this in a second, um, but you're never going to write a script out for every piece. If you did that, it would take forever. Um, I think some people might think that's kind of how you have to do it. Uh, it would take forever. And I, I don't blame you for thinking that it would take too much time because it would. Um, and it also wouldn't look good. It wouldn't sound good. You wouldn't want to have a freestyle there because if you were just scripted, you're reading off a piece of paper or teleprompter or whatever, it's going to sound very scripted and salesy. People aren't going to relate to it. And um, it's just not going to sound as good. So, um, but within that framework, you have it designed uh, to be able to create a piece of content that's organized and hits all the key points that you want to talk about that's going to relate to the customer. Um, amplify your reach. So this one, if you want to get uh, enough eyeballs um, on your post, you've got to amplify. And we'll talk about ways to do that here. And remove yourself from the posting. So th this is, I think, the second piece that people really think is just going to take forever. So you're, you're going to, you think, you know, creating the content is going to take forever, coming up with it. You're not sure how to do any part of the process. And then after that, you, what do you have to set up? reminder every day to sit down and post that thing that you just created. No, that's going to be a huge hassle. Nobody wants to do that. And there's options around it. Um, so we're going to talk about some ways to do that too, to remove yourself from the process. Um, and I'll get to that in, in uh, coming up slides. So this one, this, this right here. So the content rules has a lot of interesting statistics related to it. Um, they talk about the 1990 rule. 1% 1 of people online on these social media platforms are creators, the one that actually create the content. 9% are contributors and 90% are lurkers. So the creators, obvious, those are the ones that are actually creating the content. The contributors are the people that are in the comments or liking posts. You know, they're engaged in the process. Um, but they're not creating anything themselves. Um, that's only 10% of all the people on social media. 90% um, the lurkers. I bet we got a couple lurkers on here. I know I can be one. Um, those are the ones that are just sitting in the background, scrolling through and just looking at stuff. You know, they don't like things or scared to like things or they just don't want to or whatever. Um, they're just looking at stuff. You know, it's entertaining being on social media. So they just scroll on through and look at it and then they go back to what they're doing. Um, Knowing that, or when I found that out, was just mind blowing because I figured a lot of people did that, but never would have thought 90%. So, um, what's really great about this, because we know how powerful social media is and 90% of the people on it are just looking, that means even if you're posting stuff and you're not getting a ton of engagement or likes or comments, um, you can still be put in front of eyeballs. People will still see your brand. So, even though they're not doing that, they're still seeing it. It's still building that brand um, recognition, which is going to help you out when it's time to book that, uh, when that person's trying to book that job for, you know, a fence or a deck. All right. So as far as the content, you want to keep it bite-sized, uh, three minutes or less, and a couple stats from Facebook. So 65% of all Facebook video views come from mobile. 
Um, 85% of them, of users watch videos with the sound off, you know, probably because they're at their job and don't want to tell the, you know, their boss won't um, hear them um, or their parents, whatever. And then most people only watch 10 seconds or less. So there's a lot of uh, people out there with limited, um, you know, most of us have, are more and more impatient, I guess. Um, that's just kind of how it's going with social media. Um, and a big part of this now is with TikTok. I'm sure everyone here is sort of TikTok. Um, but TikToks, it's all video. That's all they do. And that effect from TikTok is actually translated and um, pushed into Instagram. Now Instagram has Instagram Reels. Facebook has Reels. Uh, YouTube has YouTube Shorts. Uh, so basically, TikTok was just exploding. And it's because of video. People like to watch video. And they were forced to go that way. So that's why we're talking about so much video here today. Um, also, when Instagram specifically, if you compare the reels to the posts, the reels tend to get a lot more engagement than the posts. Um, that's just uh, what tends to happen. Um, but you want to make sure they're three minutes or less. That's where I would start out with. Okay, so you don't want to hit the same key every time, meaning you don't want to post the same thing over and over and over again. Um, just like you've probably seen a competitor uh, posting a lot, you've probably seen a competitor, another business, a contractor that just posts only before and after pictures and that's it. Uh, you don't want to do that. Before and afters are great, but you want to mix it up. You want to have a more diverse library of content, uh, different things that could apply to different people. If it's just before and after, you're not, you know, capturing the hearts and minds of other customers, you know, if you were doing different types of content, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so you want to mix it up, address different problems that people have uh, and discuss them. So here's how it's done. It's not hard to get out there and do it to create this content. Um, even the videos, it's more just probably something holding you back uh, for whatever reason. But what you all you got to do, um, once you have an idea of where you what you want to uh, capture, which we'll cover in a, a couple of slides here, you just got to take out your phone, start taking pictures and video, um, whatever you think might be good content, you know, share it with um, people that work for you or your spouse, you know, to get some background on that, um, some feedback. I mean, um, that's one way to do it. You could hire a professional videographer. So depending on your budget, hiring somebody that could come out like once a month and do a lot of good content, that's a great option too. Obviously, they're going to look uh, better. Vi their videos are going to look a lot better. Um, someone from your office, this is very popular too. You have, uh, maybe not the secretary, but some kind of, uh, office employee that, um, especially if they're younger, they understand social media better, um, more often, um, hire them or use them to, uh, help create this content, create the videos, or you can hire an intern if you wanted to, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's not as hard as you think you can do it. Any of these options, any of these ways. And you're still going to have um, good content to post. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so this is kind of some different plans and topics that you can go through. Um, some different categories that you have for content that that's uh, here. So we have success story, character story, teach on a topic, motivation, and be the expert. Um, success story is like we're we keep mentioning before and after. Uh, of a recent project, those posts are good. Even though I was saying you don't want to do them every time, you don't. You just want to have um, make sure you are showing the jobs you did. Um, you can do a video saying, hey, you know, hey, we're out here. We just finished up this fence and deck. Come check it out. We did this vinyl fence, you know, hundred linear feet, whatever, and just show it off. Basically, you know, show off your good work. Um, you could talk about the family or the story behind uh, the family that you're doing it for. You know, say, hey, we're doing this fence for the Jones family. They were badly affected by the hurricane and needed it fixed. So we made sure to get it done because they have dogs and they need to go outside. So we made sure to make it extra snappy. Um, but let that story kind of grab their attention and make them, you know, when you start saying that you're helping other people out, it's going to make them uh, trust you more and you're going to sound like they can trust you to do the job uh, for their fence or deck. Um, <clears throat> so another one is character story. So everyone loves to hear how a story or how a business was created. Um, you know, how you got into the fencing or decking business, what drove you to build your fencing company. Uh, I see pretty often people 
you know, start a company because um, they start their own company because they're working for somebody that they didn't like their boss and their boss didn't have the customer's best interest in mind. And you saw a real need to actually do a better job. Um, you know, maybe the boss just only cared about money and didn't care about their employees, uh, that kind of thing. Um, also teaching on a topic, this one should be easy being an expert in your, in your, uh, space. Um, you know, people ask questions like, should you repair or replace your deck depending on the, you know, the, um, state of it, uh, how much does it cost to install a vinyl fence? Uh, what type of fence is best for you? You can ask these and explain why that's the case. Um, but when you're teaching and not just offering a sale, you know, not creating a video every time saying, Hey, we got a, you know, <laughs> free estimates here and there, come go out through the website, that kind of thing. When you're actually giving good feedback and good value, that's going to make people trust you more um, and think you're the expert. So you're kind of building an authority uh, when you do things like this. Motivation, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm sure there's some quotes out there. If not, you can find them, just ones that really resonate with you and that can display your values um, as a company. And then be an expert. So this one, you can do a lot of cool stuff with um, you know, fencing or decking businesses since you're using a lot of different tools. Um, you can show off a tool that you're using to install something. Um, that's people are, will find that interesting. You know, if they find it interesting, they watch that video. That's um, that's good for you, um, and that's going to add some stickiness to uh, to your brand. And just you know, showing really any kind of work that you do is going to help out. Um, also, kind of talking about where some people go wrong. So, if a contractor, if you see something, um, say you're replacing a fence and you see an old practice that just looks terrible or using the wrong wrong materials or whatever, you can kind of point that out uh, to show like what you do, why your process is a lot better. Uh, again, this is all about building stickiness and um, brand recognition. All right, so now I was talking about the framework. I want to actually go through it and explain a little bit um, because once you kind of get in this mindset that you need to create content, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. You know, you're going to be out in the job and you're going to be like, Hey, more than likely the things you see are interesting to somebody. Um, and if you think about it for not too long, you can probably come up with a list. Um, so having that list of content to create is really going to put you ahead and then you can apply it to this framework. So the framework here, so it always starts with a promise. Um, this is kind of how you're going to be pulling them into the content to keep, so they keep watching. Um, you're going to be talking about the problem. So this is the problem that you have, and I'm going to fit, and I'm going to solve it for you. Uh, then you go into your branding. You got to make sure you tell them who you are. This is Alex Danner with Fence and Deck Marketers, um, or Joe from Joe's Fence and Deck. And then the seed is going to kind of give an overview of what you're going to be training them on, so they know to, what to expect. And then topping and training is, of course, the actual thing you're talking about and explaining. Um, call to action. You always want to add a call to action. So hey, if you're if you're interested in this, um, reach out to us on our website for a free estimate or at 555-5555. Um, give us a call and um, sign off from there. Uh, and here's kind of an example of this too, just to give you an idea. So you could have a video um, on your phone uh, of you just on the job site or wherever in the office and say, you know, on this video, I'll share how to determine which fence type is best for your home. Um, this is... Alex Danner with A plus fencing and decking. Um, this the C would be this is one of the most common questions that we get from homeowners, um, and we will be going through different types of fence and which are best for which situations. Um, the training, you know, you have options of wood, vinyl, chain link, etc., and we think these types will be best uh, for you for these situations or these conditions. And then the call to action, you know, if you would like to receive a detailed estimate uh, to walk your property and decide which would be the best, most ideal fencing material, um, please visit our website, schedule a free estimate, or give us a call at, you know, 444-444. Um, and then signing off, you know, thanks for watching this video. I look forward to talking with you soon. Um, obviously, that's a very shortened version, but, you know, just expanding on each one of those sections is really the whole system. Um, it's not overly complicated. 
All right, so I wanna do a video exercise. I hope I didn't scare anybody off um, by saying that. It's not gonna to be too painful, but um, you know, when we do these webinars, it's nice to actually put something into play and have something when you get off um, rather than just listening to me jabber all day. Um, so what I'd like to do is pick three topics that you can create, a, um, create content based off of three videos um, and write them down. And just to recap, if you're not sure of different ideas, um, think about the questions your customers are asking you, which there's probably a handful that you're just constantly hearing. Um, think of a way you could address that in a video um, or cool stuff that you're doing. Maybe you got some new machine, um, a way to show that off or a specific piece of the process, um, part of the process for installing. Um, write those down. I'll give you a, just a couple minutes so you can think about it um, and we'll come back. If you want, feel free, you can enter it in the chat too. Okay, so financing options, that's a great one. Um, maintenance of a wood fence, good too. Give you a little bit more time. And if you can't think of any off the top of your head, feel free to use the ones we went over. Um, different types of people ask about, uh, just mentioning the types that you install will be good too. All right. I think that was two minutes. Um, so once you have these topics, you know, I hope you were able to come up with at least three. Um, but I really just challenge you to just, when we get off this call, just try and shoot one, you know, just one, if you want to do all three, that's even better. But usually one is just, um, just the easiest. You don't have to overthink it too much. Find the best topic, shoot a video. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about sounding dumb. Um, that's always common. People think they're going to sound, uh, sound you know, dumb when they're on the on the video. Pretty much everybody feels silly at first when they do these. Um, but if you actually give it a try, I promise it's not as bad as you think. Um, and uh, you know, even the best best people on camera are going to be terrible the first time. So uh, just getting used to it, having some fun with it, it's really going to uh, be good too. You know, it doesn't have to be so dry or um, so strict, you know, just something where you kind of have fun with it uh, is, is what I would recommend. Um, you know, you can use your webcam or your phone. Those are going to be the easiest. So you can put it right on social media. Uh, if you have a bigger camera, you could do that too. That's going to be your higher quality video, but it's a little bit more extra steps to get it online. So just for ease of, ease of use, I would just say put it on your phone or webcam and go from there. Okay, so repurposing the content. Um, Kind of like this webinar, you know, it's very long. Um, it's pretty long, uh, you know. So we, when we create this, we can share the whole thing, you know. But we can also cut up individual sections. So that's what you can do with your video. So if you're sitting there, you know, each week creating a lot of content, you can take that one video and chop it up into individual pieces and post those pieces online. Um, so that way you can save time by just having one long video. Excuse me. And then take that video, take out pieces where it makes sense. So you have individual bite-sized pieces, and then you can post those um, on your social media. And the big thing with this is the more you do, the more your library is going to build. 
So if you have good pictures, you have good videos, you can build that library and then um, add it to different social media, social media platforms um, and repurpose it as you go. So this is a big piece here. Um, as I was saying earlier, like you, most people don't want to spend the time to take the videos because they think it's going to take forever. Um, I get it. But the second piece is you don't want to like remember every day to post. Um, and that's what these tools are for. You can use Sendable, Social Pilot, Sprout Social, Planable, Meet Edgar uh, to actually plan your, your uh, social media posts. So you can upload a ton of posts, you know, write the captions or whatever into these tools and then schedule them for when you want to go out. So, I mean, ideally you do like three to four a week. Um, and if you use this tool, you know, each week you can just schedule them to go out. All right. You want one on every Wednesday, at one o'clock, Tuesday at three o'clock, Friday at 1130, you know, you schedule those out. So, um, they go out the right time without you having to go to your computer every time and doing it. <clears throat> All right. So next steps, and we're kind of getting towards the end here. Um, once we leave the call, you know, you want to, you're welcome to use um, the topics, of course, that I was mentioning, but you want to create a content plan where you can uh, have a schedule for each week, exactly what you want to talk about, create that, customize it, and then block out that time each week to actually shoot the video. Um, and then once you're done from there, you know, you have the videos, you chop them up, uh, repurpose them any ways you need to. Uh, you want to set up your syndication with those tools that you have um, that I showed you earlier. Once that's all set up, you just kind of let it go. You know, you don't have to worry about it from um, after that point and you can just come back to when you need more content. So I'm, I'm saying once a week, cause that's a good habit to get into. You know, it's, if you just do it once a month that it's more likely to be forgotten. Um, I think they say like 21 days to create a habit. So if you do it every week, it's gonna be a lot easier. Um, if you try to do it on each job, uh, that's good too. But at the very least schedule once a week um, or once every couple of weeks, depending on how much time you block off to create those videos and then uh, add them to those tools. Okay, so what we've covered here, um, what we've gone through. So we've gone through how to create your video content for social media, um, the weekly planning process for those postings and the overall framework you use for posting this uh, content and how to syndicate it through different social media channels um, to get as many eyeballs as possible and repurposing that to um, increase the frequency of your posts. So that's what we've gone over um, so far. Um, Fence and Deck Marketers, we do handle social media posts if that's something you're interested in. The custom video stuff is kind of something you do in-house. Um, we do more like different uh, types of standard posts. So um, as far as the other digital marketing that we do, we create very, very nice websites, ones that are built to convert and are based off of our research and experience to convert more people. And also SEO is huge, huge. Um, you have to be doing SEO if you're a fencing or decking company, if you want to compete. Um, and especially, you know, in the recession coming up, uh, having Google ads, we're not coming up, is here. Uh, the uh, Google ads are also very important. That's your pay-per-click. You have to pay per click to Google. Uh, same with Facebook ads, but it's based off of impressions. Um, all of these we handle for fencing and decking companies, and we get very, very good results. Um, and as I said, we only work with these types of companies. So our processes are dialed in specifically to them. Um, if you have any questions or um, comments, feedback, anything like that, feel free to give us a call, 410-261-4334, uh, or go to our website and you can submit an inquiry there at deckfencemarketers.com. Um, and um, that's it for the presentation.